this video we're going to create the standing lamp for our interior. I'll begin by hiding my walls and floors so I can navigate around my viewport for the modeling process. I'm going to begin in the front view. I'll be using the CV Curve tool to revolve the standing lamp base and light bulb. Holding on the space bar, I'll go to Create, Curve Tools, CV Curve Tools, Attributes. And in that tool setting window, I'm going to make sure it's set for two. I want to introduce a curve that will serve as the stand-in bulb against the y-axis. I'll start with the bottom of the base, clicking against the y-axis, and putting a number of Bezier points in as I go to draw the shape I might want. It's easier to add more points and then delete the ones I don't need afterwards. When I have the points I want, I'll hit return to make it into an object line. It'll be bright green. When I've worked against the y-axis like this, my pivot is against the y-axis, and that's the point at which my geometry will revolve. Once I have the shape I want, I'll hold down the space bar, and I'll go to Surfaces. Now you'll see the relationship between curves and surfaces in your hotbox. Any curve has to be made into a piece of geometry through the surface menu. Clicking on surfaces, I'm going to go to revolve and I'm going to go to the attributes. I'll go up to the left hand corner and I'll choose reset settings. It should be the Y axis. I'll hit apply. And I have something like this. Returning to my front view, because of the history I can edit this if I want. So I'll move my geometry out so I can access the path. This will allow me to go to the curve, control vertex, and I can now move around these points, if so desired, to edit the shape of that lamp. It's pretty subjective at this point. And now I have something like this. Now I have the lamp I want, but if in the event while you're revolving, the shape you get isn't the shape that you wanted, I've put my vertice well outside the shape of the path. Now if I were to go to surfaces and I go to revolve, I get this shape that I didn't desire. It's an easy fix. I'll move the geometry so that I can access the path. And now if I click on the path, I can hold down D and I can move the pivot of my path down to the base. And if I were to move it now, I can get the shape I want by moving the entire path. I'll select my geometry, center the pivot, and if I wanted to now, I could move this into the center of my viewport. I'll delete by type history. Now that I have the bulb and the base created, I want to put color on it. To do so, I'm going to convert this NURB surface to a polygon surface. That will allow me to separate out the faces for the light bulb and assign it one color and then the base another. With the geometry selected, I'll hold down my spacebar and I'll go to Modify. And down towards the bottom, you'll see Convert. That submenu at the top reads NURBs to polygons, and that's what we want. I'm going to go to the Attributes. Now in this Attribute Option window, I'm going to select Control Points, and I'll hit Apply. You'll notice that the geometry got very blocky. You're seeing a duplicate of that original lamp as a polygon. I'll separate it out. Now what's happening is because we may want to edit this shape, we have the option to edit it through the original NURB surface. Had I kept the path, I could have used the path to edit both of these pieces of geometry. But to illustrate this, I'll grab a couple of points in the middle and I'll pull it out. And you can see now by editing the NURBs, I can also edit the polygon. I no longer need the NURB surface. So I'm going to delete by type history. Now remember to delete by type history, always select the piece of geometry that you intend to keep. Selecting the polygon, I'll click on delete by type history. Deleting my NURB surface, 
I'll now go to the polygon surface, right click and choose assign new material. I'm going to use Arnold and the AI standard surface. The attributes will appear on the right hand side in the channel box and attributes windows. I'll name my node and I'll assign it a color. Now in the event you don't see the AI standard surface attribute window on the right when you introduce the color, you'll have to click on the hypershade. The hypershade is a little blue pool ball down in the cluster of Hollywood clapboards. If I were to click on that and then click on the node that represents my lamp, it will appear over here afterwards. And it should be all right from then on. Uh, very often it won't appear though if the computer crashes on you. Now I'm going to change the color of the light bulb at the top. I'll right click and choose face. And I'll just marquee select the faces I think would be the shape of my light bulb. And I'll right click and towards the bottom of the menu I'll choose assign new material. Arnold, AI standard surface, and I'll assign it a color. Now that I've added the color to the lamp, I'm going to go to my perspective view. And I'm zooming in on the top of the light bulb, and you'll see a hole in the top perhaps. And that was because my vertex when I revolved wasn't against the y, the y axis so accurately. It's easy to fix. I'll hit 4 on the keyboard, and I'll right click and choose vertex. And I'm going to select just the vertices around the opening, holding down the space bar. I'll go to Edit Mesh, and I'll choose Merge to Center. Now this will be more critical in other situations, but with the light bulb it wouldn't be because we're going to have a lampshade on it as well.